basically in the game, uh, you take control of a tank in, and you roam about this beautiful, destructible environment and encounter other players and challenge them to epic battles. Very explosive, epic battles. Yeah, sounds sweet, right? <laughs> so, why the project is awesome. For those of you who went to the Rosetta Stone Game Jam, words are concrete. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> no. um, so, uh, it's 3D. This is going to be a 3D project. We're using Ogre 3D, and Ogre 3D comes out with some really um, awesome visuals. Uh, everyone loves MMOs. This is a fact. Why else would the market be oversaturated with MMOs, right? Yes. Because they hit certain parts of your brain. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Tanks and explosions. I mean, come on. What uh, what more could you want other than women? Uh, I'll say that too. <laughs> yeah, but tanks and explosions pretty much covers it. Uh, and oh, we're designed by the whole team, so there's not going to be any specific designer positions like there are in many other games. We're all going to work together at the group meetings to come up and figure out exactly which direction the game is going. So everyone who joins the team is going to have a stake in the game. Uh, and it's made by SGD, and anything we make is golden. That's true. That's a fact. That is that's, that's, that's that's science. science. I can't think of a single game. start with C++, uh, and that's going to work out nicely because the Yggdrasil engine will take care of the MMO aspects of the game. Uh, that's also in C++, so that's real nice. Uh, Ogre 3D will be using for our rendering engine, uh, and it will make everything look very, very pretty, very easily. Gorgeous. So uh, this, this screen actually, I think also the nighttime shot that we saw before. Sorry, the projector quality is kind of horrible, but if you kind of look over here, you can see how, oh, the the beach. Beach. Really how nice, yeah. Yeah. How nice oh. the, the sky is. Oh, like uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so anyway, that's, that's, well, those are actual so potential screenshots. Yeah. So that's kind of one of the look and feel we're going to go for in one of the uh, regions. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we're going to leverage the strengths uh, of both newer and older members. So newer members bringing their fresh ideas in and uh, kind of helping the older, more stale members of the club kind of deal with, you know, all the design and actual implementation issues. Uh, also, we have, uh, we've planned out uh, all the different uh, roles and checkpoints in great detail, so all the planning should be out of the way, so that'll free us up to do a lot of the good design work that we all enjoy so much, uh, and development work over the course of the semester. So that should streamline that pretty well. And we're also going to focus a lot in this project on world building. Kind of give everyone who's involved in the project a little bit more of a chance to uh, unleash their creative side. Um, yeah, so that, that sounds really nice, right? Uh, maybe I can throw some more buzzwords in there. <laughs> MMO. <laughs> Excellent. That's not a buzzword. <laughs> All right, so if you're still not sure about this, we have a, a screenshot of in-game footage. <laughs> it's gonna look like that. All right, maybe not, but it will look like that. <laughs> yes. What's up? You you big tank. That into every oh. maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, big tanks in your face. Okay. Uh, so we have a unique team structure. Um, mildly unique. You might recognize it from Scott's. Uh, there will be. Uh, <laughs> there will be three teams. There's gonna be the engine team. Content team and the environment team. They're grouped vertically here if you can't see if it you very can't well. Tell, yeah. So uh, the first team, the engine team, is going to consist of two members, two members only. That's how we want to keep it. Small code base, small group of people working on it. There's going to be an engine architect. Uh, we're looking for an experienced programmer for this position, someone who knows how to program in C. Obviously, it's the minimum of having taken CS 216. Uh, they is required. Yeah, 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 we have these called now. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what they're going to work on is essentially building the game engine, working on the mechanics of the game, interacting.
interfacing over 3D with the client side, making it all very nice, make, uh, being responsible essentially for programming all the, all the parts of the game. Uh, and then our second position on the engine team is going to be the network gameplay developer. And this guy's going to work on, or girl, I guess, this person is going to work for them, uh, on interfacing with Yggdrasil, the engine, and uh, doing any networked gameplay components, making sure that all the all the games interface well with each other. When one person shoots on one game, it shows up on the other game at around the same time. Something like that. <laughs> that might be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it could be good. Yeah. Any, anything, any, game, any uh, gameplay specific things that you know involve the network only instead of just clients would also be handled by this person. Uh, so the next team is the content team. This is going to be the team that makes the content of the game. Uh, the first position is the content manager. We are one. We're looking for one content manager. Um, the content manager needs to be well versed in creating content, both 2D and 3D. And if you're not well versed in 3D, you need to at least be able to make a passable 3D object and be willing to spend a lot of time learning how to uh, make the 3D objects within the first week. Which I think is a, a very important point, let me just interject. Um, Please. Uh, a lot of the content issues that we'll be facing is uh, are 3D. We're dealing with 3D stuff. So not everybody might have uh, a lot of experience with that sort of thing. So uh, one of the things we do in SGD is sort of try to teach uh, new skills. So the, the content team may end up being a very good location to be if you're looking to pick up some new uh, game-related skills. Yes. Specifically, we're looking for the content manager to kind of shepherd <coughs> the content creators, the under positions, and teach them how to create 3D objects and other such things. Yeah. Um, this is kind of curiosity. Are shaders managed by the content managers and content creators or by the engine people? Well, we're yes. actually looking at me handling that. But okay. if we if <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're the directors, by the way. <laughs> right. We weren't going to say that because you're not really supposed to say, oh, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Because then you might get roped into extra stuff. But uh, if you do have uh, skills in that area, those would be definitely more than, it would be what we more than helpful. Plus. Um, and you could <laughs> actually. I don't know which team. I guess under content it would make more sense, but since it's more of a technical part, it might um, be more of an angle on it. Yeah. So I think any position, I, th I think you should definitely declare those skills if you have sort of unique skills in the shader area. Um, so yeah. So the content manager is going to do that, and the content creator is going to essentially make build the content as well. They're going to make the you know trees, the rocks, the models, the textures that go on top of these models, all sorts of things. Scripting work, but greater in the fact that they're going to take a uh, larger brunt of the 